check, check, mic check, 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 mic check. <laughs> Welcome to Podcast Envy. I'm your podcast boss, Andrea Clunder. What exactly is a podcast boss, you say? Think of me as that friendly, mentoring kind of boss, that one who will show you the ropes of the craft of your new job and bring you into the culture of the industry, and who will hold you accountable when you start to veer down the wrong path. Today, we continue on our travel podcasting adventure with a woman who owns quite possibly the best and most definitely the most fun to say travel moniker ever. Lizette Austin, also known as Jet Set Lizette. Lizette is the producer and host of Globetrotter Lounge, an award-winning show where she gets the stories of women who have found creative ways to travel more. But wait, there is more. Lizette is known for teaching people how to travel hack, a term for a practice we'll get into a little more later. But just think, creative ways to get more mileage for your dough. In fact, it is central to Lizette's mission that she help people get out of the mindset of thinking that travel just isn't in the cards for them. I discovered Lizette on Instagram, loved her feed, saw that we had a mutual connection through Beth Santos of Wonderful and the Women in Travel Summit, who was a long time ago guest on my other podcast, The Creative Imposter, and I knew I had to have her as part of this series. But of course, Lizette doesn't just want to be pigeonholed in the travel space. Mm-mm. She's a dancer, a web designer, a storyteller, a self-assured lover of following up on shiny objects that hold her attention for long enough, et cetera. You know I love those et cetera people. There was so much to talk about that, speaking of the creative imposter, there is a companion episode to this one coming out over there with Lizette, sharing some ideas for how to find your sense of adventure, even if you're feeling restless at home, and a beautiful travel story about finding roots abroad. Links, of course, for Globetrotter Lounge and all things Lizette Austin, along with all of the resources we'll mention in this episode, will be found in the show notes at thecreativeimposter.com forward slash pod envy 073. Now, this episode was recorded summer of 2020 during prime time COVID, which has forced many creatives to reevaluate more than just our revenue streams. Inequalities highlighted by the social justice movement have prompted content shifts that are sometimes mega impactful and other times well-meaning but missing the mark. We'll talk about that, about reassessing values, knowing when to stay the course and when to turn the ship. This conversation took just such an unexpected turn when Lizette shared some surprising news with me about Globetrotter Lounge. And I started to feel a little bit more like a podcast therapist, or at least a podcast relationship coach. But I'm going to let her tell you herself in her own time. Stay tuned. Lizette Austin, otherwise known as Jet Set Lizette, welcome to Podcast Envy. Thank you. It's great to be on the show. Where are you in the world right now in this moment? I'm in Seattle or a suburb of Seattle, but basically the Seattle area in Washington state. Okay. So you are a global world traveler. You have podcasted about traveling. You have done courses about travel hacking and using points to travel the world. How do you actually define travel hacking? Well, travel hacking is a very broad term, really. I think it's come to mean for a lot of people, the credit card travel hacking, but really that's a subcategory using okay. credit card signup bonuses to rack up miles and points. It's anytime you find a way to make travel more affordable. And so you could even couch surf as a travel hack with your friends, you know, or finding good deals, finding glitch fares, you know, back in the day, it used to be cutting out coupons out of like box tops and stuff, <laughs> but whatever. So any way you can to kind of make it more affordable. And then the credit card signup bonuses. Yeah, it, it seems pretty scary because you're opening a lot of credit cards. So people freak out about that. But I've been able to do that without racking up debt or paying interest or pay, you know, no, I don't like to give them interest, the banks. Um, and also I haven't damaged my credit score. In fact, it's gone up a lot. So yeah. What is top of mind for you when somebody reaches out and says, hey, let's talk about travel during a global pandemic? Well, actually, I'm having that happen a lot because my podcast is still going and I am talking to women who have found creative ways to travel more. None of us are traveling right now. So now I'm always asking them, 
about that. And we're talking about that. And we're trying to just orient ourselves to this new reality. How long have you been doing the podcast? The Globetrotter Lounge has been going for about two and a half years now. Yeah. And what was it about podcasting that was the shiny object of that moment that caught your attention? (laughs) So it's interesting. Someone told me way back a few years before I started, they said, you know, you should do a podcast. And I was like, who has time for that? Like, I always have a lot of side hustles. I have a lot going on. I'm traveling, you know. So I'm like, podcasting? Wait, no, uh uh-uh. I just like totally dismissed it. Then another person, a good friend of mine about a year later said, you know, you really should podcast. And I was like, oh, please, here this comes again. And but that time, for some reason, I was a little bit more receptive. So then I looked into it a little more. And I remember as I looked into it, I thought, you know, I can do this. And I have that attitude. Like once I decide, maybe I should try this. I'm pretty good at like tackling stuff. I just, okay, I just, let me try it. And I will say that the very first day I was in this little recording room and I had put the mic on and I knew I had to record an intro and I took a little online course, of course, about it, right? That's what I, that's what we do. And I started recording and all of a sudden I had this huge flashback to when I was a kid and I used to spend hours, I don't know how I forgot this, I spent hours in the basement with my friend, my girlfriend, recording radio shows into a <laughs> tape cassette player. And as I was like, Lisette, we have the same childhood. <laughs> I, know, I was like, hello and welcome to the Globetrotter Lounge. And all of a sudden I was like, oh my gosh, it's all coming back because it's all I did. I was like the radio show host. And I thought this is actually a childhood dream. I just didn't know till I did that first recording. And here we are. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> So, I mean, besides being in a pandemic, there's been a lot going on, obviously, with anti-racism movements. And in some cases, you could say, with some people, pro-racism movements, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But there has been a lot happening in the United States, especially right now. And as a podcast coach and consultant and producer, I've seen a lot of people looking at how they can sort of shift their content strategy to be more what is the right way to say this, but to be more transparent about where their values are and where they fall within this issue. And I think that there are a lot of people looking at how do I better use the platform that I have or that I've created to bring more equity into this space or to amplify voices. And I hate saying all of these phrases because I feel like they're starting to become very cliche. And so Mm -hmm. that's why I'm having a hard time actually saying this because everything that comes out of my mouth sounds like a, a new cliche to me. I know. But one thing that I noticed that you did that I really liked was that you took some time in your social media to post or re-highlight guests that you've already had, like Black women travelers that you've already featured throughout the history of your show. How did you decide to do that? What was your thinking around that sort of social media push? I clearly was like all of us, like it was such a difficult time. And, you know, I'm, I'm half Black. I pretty much identify as Black. I do have a white mom. But anyway, I've always really wanted to have a diverse group of women on my show. I had originally thought about just doing like, oh, I could have just women of color and focus it down in some way. But I ultimately decided to just say women. But I always worked to have some diversity. Also, not just of ethnicity and race, but also age. Mm -hmm. I also try to have people on the show who are not big social media people. Because it's easy to be like, oh, I've got to interview folks who have a lot of big following and all this. I have a few guests who don't even get on on social media at all. And so, you know, I was already focused on diversity. So when all of this started happening, I just had that thought. It just came to me because I also was like, okay, everybody's posting about it was sort of interesting to watch what happened, you know, on Instagram and stuff. It's So I was glad to see a lot of, you know, Black Lives Matter and all the things that were coming up and everybody's making all this noise. But I thought, wait a minute, what can I do instead of just doing that because everybody's doing it and I should do that sort of feeling. And, you know, part of me is like, well, I'm black, so I don't have to do anything, Uh, (laughs) which didn't make sense either. You know, but like, this is not for me to do. This is for the people who, you know, need to step up. But then I thought, wait a minute, I have interviewed all these great black women. And so, yeah, I just decided to look at what would make sense for my platform. It's like, well, It was June, of course. It was Black History Month. It was all the things were happening at once, right? So I just thought, this is perfect. I'm going to do this. And I was really glad to do that because 
it just made so much sense. It made so much sense for me. Yeah. So there's other posts I clearly made, but I just wanted to stay also within my brand, I guess, or what, you know, with what I was doing. And so for me, that felt like a really good way to do it. Yeah. And I will say that when I was putting together this series for the show and I was looking for different travelers to the feature and to highlight, it was surprising to me how much harder I had to work to find people who were not white. Mm -hmm. If you just do a general, let's say, do some hashtag research. It's like, why would I put in the hashtag travel podcast? It's almost all white. And also, like, you could narrow that down too, right? There's probably all able-bodied. I was getting a lot of American and European. And so then, you know, I stumble across your brand and your show. And I was like, oh, my gosh, there are so many diverse people, women in the travel space that I might not have stumbled across them without first stumbling across you. And I had to do things like specifically put in women of color travelers or women of color travel podcasters. I had to put those specific qualifiers in to find Mm -hmm. someone who wasn't white. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. Unfortunately, that is the case. I mean, there are some articles that now have been, you know, put out there, but because there's a women of color podcasting Facebook group now. So the folks running that Danielle Desir, she put out an article, you know, so you can find it, but you're right. You have to look for it. And I think that's what was shocking to me too. When I went to Women in Travel Summit, a pleasant shock, pleasant surprise, but I got there and there were all these women of color travelers and it was like, what? Oh, okay. But you're right. It was like, why didn't I know that? Or I was just starting to figure that out because there's these movements that have been coming about Black Girls Travel too, and all these different groups and things. But for me, it was like, oh, wow, this is so great because you don't get that sense. And there are a lot of people, I had one guest on my show, like uh, Marty Lewis, who is actively trying to get the travel industry to like even advertise to people of color. Like they don't even do, you know, if you don't see people of color as represented in, in like ads and things like that. So yeah, we're still behind, but it's, it's starting to shift. I think that's why my logo you know, I kind of came up with Jet Set Lizette. That was cute. But I was like, ooh, wait. And I had that vision of like wings and me, the silhouette and my afro. I was kind of like, look, I'm a woman and I have an afro. But like, <laughs> I am so not like most travel hackers are white men. Right. Legitimately, there's very right. few women, period. And then of the women, I might be the only, well, no, there's probably a few, but who aren't really, I mean, there's people who travel hack who are women of color, but yeah. who are putting themselves out there. It was like, I have to make a little statement here. <laughs> That's actually really brilliant. It's your favorite part of the episode, a visit from the podcast angel. Think of the podcast angel like the tooth fairy. You leave some money under your pillow in exchange for a beautiful tooth. Wait, that's not quite right. In all seriousness, podcast angels are those products, services, brands, and opportunities that keep this podcast boss in business and making this show for you. Today, I'm inviting new and aspiring podcasters who haven't launched yet, or maybe you've just launched, but you feel like maybe you might be missing something, to join me October 1st for my last Podcast Envy Launch Your Podcast online class of 2020. We'll be stepping through an overview of my six-part Podcast Envy process for creating a show that you and your audience will love. And I've kept the class super intimate so that we can hear more about your show and find the next best step forward for you. Don't forget to sign up by September 28th to get the early bird rate. You can claim your space at thecreativeimposter.com forward slash events, linked of course in the show notes for this episode. And if you're a little further along your podcasting journey and have a burning question that's been nagging at you or some hump you're dying to get over with your show, why not sign up for a complimentary office hours session with me? Go to thecreativeimposter.com forward slash office hours to fill out a quick form and share more about where you are and what you're struggling with. And if I think I can help you, we'll book an hour together totally free to talk it through and record to share right here on an episode of Podcast Envy with the community. I have two spots left for 2020. What are you waiting for? 
Once again, those magical links and those magical show notes can be found at thecreativeimposter.com forward slash pod envy 073. Yeah. And I mean, in general, just so we have the same childhood in that we were recording radio shows as children <laughs> onto audio cassettes, but not in terms of traveling. Like my family didn't travel anywhere and we certainly didn't fly. If we're going on a family vacation, we are definitely packing into the minivan and like driving way too far <laughs> together. And the air conditioner is probably broken at that <laughs> <Right>. time. <laughs> you know? And so I wonder if you ever think about how you may be inspiring other people who may think that travel is not for them or is not an option for them. Yeah, that really is kind of my whole goal, right? It's like, I've had so many friends, you know, they watch, they would watch me travel. And the first thing is, well, I can't afford that. And I'd be like, no, 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 just open these three cards, (laughs) these three credit cards, you know, and then they're like, yeah, but you know, the kids are really young. I'm like, do you have anyone you could leave the children with? (laughs) Like just trying to get, especially moms to think outside that, that idea of limitation or bring the kids and also making it more affordable. But yeah, I really love to inspire people to travel. And that's why really the show, yes, I was hoping to widen my audience, but I didn't just get on there and start doing a travel hack show. I thought that would bore myself and other people. (laughs) I wanted to learn more about how how other people travel and in doing so inspire others because even though I had a million miles and points, there's lots of people out there who are traveling in ways that I wish I could travel, that yeah. I still sometimes say, oh, you know, it'd be so great to actually live abroad for a year. I don't know how people do that, but I can't because fill in the blank, all these reasons why. Yeah. And so I love hearing people's creativity, hearing how they just go for it. And actually it inspires me, not just in the travel sense, but also in other areas of life, right? To think outside the box, like, oh, people saying, well, I can't afford it. Oh, I'll be an international pet sitter. Like what? You know, um, <laughs> that's a thing. Okay. wait a minute, hold on. Finding other things that you love and finding a way to combine them with travel so that it all works out. And even now with the pandemic, one of my most recent guests is into astro tourism. So, and I always used to love watching like eclipse. I saw the total eclipse. It blew my mind. You know, I'd been to some telescopes. So I was like, oh, that's what I was doing. Astro tourism. I didn't even know. And now yeah, we went out and saw the comet recently and and we might go somewhere overnight to go because we could still do that. You could still go and look at the night sky anytime. And so that kind of inspiration, right? Like yeah. even for me now, I was like, oh, oh yeah, I could do that. You know, that's why I do all this stuff. That's my goal is to help me and others get creative. Side note, when I saw your episode that said astrotourism, I totally thought she was working for Elon Musk and his all whole like SpaceX <laughs> right. program. <laughs> right. I know. Right. <laughs> I know. Oh, God, I loved that episode. It was so fun. <laughs> but now you're making another pivot. I am. So we're talking about how amazing the Globetrotter Lounge is. Yes. And what's happening? Well, what's happening is that I am that person who likes new things. And I think sometimes I have to acknowledge that there's going to be a time where I might not want to do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. I did early on realize that I couldn't just go forever. And I did do the seasons. Thank goodness. Figured that out because I was starting to burn out a little bit. And then also I had longer seasons initially. This season right now, season three is shorter by about half. But also, you know, I had already before the pandemic realized for myself, that I could sense that this wasn't going to be my main bread and butter or anything like that. And I still was working a few days a week, you know, those multiple streams and the web design stream has just been like, woo, was really doing really well for me. So I just, there was that. And then there was the lack of time, right? And I'm always looking to balance my life. That is the downside of having multiple income streams. Mm -hmm. Balance is elusive. And so I just started to feel like, wow, I don't know if I want to keep doing this just forever. And then there was a pandemic. (laughs) Right when I was starting season three, it was like I delayed it a month. You know, I was just like, this is going to be weird. And I still went for it. I'd already decided to do less, less episodes. And I'm glad for that. But it really drove it home for me, right? Like I was already moving that way of maybe wrapping it up. And this is actually the first time I'm like saying this publicly to, you know, like like, that I'm wrapping it up. But the thing is, I also had some new podcasting interests because I do really love podcasting. And I have 
a real passion. What I was about to start doing before the pandemic was DNA travel because I'm adopted Mm -hmm. and I had found a lot of information through DNA, through ancestry for years, even before the DNA travel trend. I was like, oh, well, now that I know my breakdown, um, you know, I'm going to go to those places. That's how I roll. So I was already going to do that. Then I found my birth family, which is a crazy story. One, One half of it, we won't get into that, but let's just say things got super interesting. And so then I started listening to tons of podcasts about genetic genealogy and, you know, so things right in life, you get new interests, you get new passions, or maybe they pivot a little. It's still travel, but it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I totally would love to focus on genetic journeys, whether it's even just a journey internally of finding out more about who you are, but also literally then going somewhere where you're genetically from. Okay. So then the pandemic hit. So I've got a big slowdown on all of that. But that is another reason why I started thinking I may want to start another podcast. And I've learned my lessons finally at 50 to not start to, you know, to actually let one go. Cause I have people saying, Oh, great. We'll just start the second one. I'm like, no, <laughs> I can't do two. I've done that for a little bit. Can't do that again. Yeah. Do you know how you're going to end? I don't know if this is like a spoiler because I don't know when your show is actually going to conclude, but do you have a way that you're going to end it for your listeners? I love that you're asking me this. Is this now an interview or is this some kind of like special session where I can work through my, (laughs) I'm like, like, thank you. Good question. Let's talk about that. (laughs) Feel free to talk about how you also feel about this right now. (laughs) Okay. Because it's been in the back of my mind and I love how you're like, you know, I kind of have a plan. Okay. So I first, I had to start putting it out there a little bit. So I've been talking about it with people and getting other podcasters input for sure. Even before I decided this, that's where people were saying, well, why don't you have two? And I decided that I would probably at least, I'm always interviewing people. So I, I, I did one solo episode, maybe two. I need to do another one. I haven't done one this season. So I thought about doing a solo episode and give, just doing what I'm doing now, like talking about it and saying, well, this has been a great season. Who knew I'd be doing season three in a pandemic? Wow. Still what great things I've learned, maybe recap. And then I just figured I would just talk about it and be honest and not, you know, I mean, I'm not going to like, the show will be up there. I'm not going to tear it down. And I suppose I I was thinking of saying, I'm putting a pin in it. There's a part of me that thinks, should I really say it's over? There will never be another episode because, you know, but I could say I'm putting a pin in it. I'm going to do some other travel podcasts. Potentially, there's one other interesting potential podcast project. But the thing is, I would like to invite my listeners to join me on that. Yeah, I don't want it to be like, this is the end. I don't see it that I'm ending podcasting, but yeah. And I also have thought about maybe, you know, there's the idea of doing a book of what I've learned from all these travelers, but I'm not sure about that. But, you know, I may pull something together from this, this whole two and a half years of podcasting on this one topic with women travelers. That's all I got for that right now. That's where I'm at with it. And it's going to wrap up. The season ends at the end of September. Okay. So it'll be like 56 episodes. So that's my current plan. How do you feel about ending a show? (laughs) I I know, I know. I haven't been there yet. Do you just feel like, I feel really good about what I've done and I'm ready to move on to the next thing because I'm so excited about the next thing or does it feel sad to say goodbye to that? You know, I feel, I do feel really good about what I've done. I think I don't feel too sad about it because it's starting to not feel right to do it. I think the pandemic has pushed me farther in that direction, obviously. I don't think everyone who's travel podcasters should just fold up shop because the pandemic. But for me, it was already something I was thinking about. And then this just sort of pushed me over the edge. So when I'm going to interview, I'm loving my guests, but it's just feeling like more trying to get through it, figure out how to make it work. You know, it just doesn't feel the same right now. And so I think from that standpoint, I don't feel horribly sad. I feel excited for the next thing. I'm also looking forward to a little bit of a break. And so I pay attention to those cues like internally of if I'm feeling like, oh yeah, I need a break. And it's half the episodes I did the last season. Something's not, it's not there in the same way that it was for me before. And I think the part about, do I feel sad saying goodbye? That might be the part where I'm not reluctant to actually firmly end it. I think I'll say, you know, (laughs) I'm not going to have a next season next year. I'm putting a pin in it. I'm going to start a new project. But will I say that it's completely over. I don't know if I can say that. Yeah. But I'll just say it's taking a new form for me. So I feel a little sad, but I mostly feel proud of what I've done. I mean, it's kind of like leaving a place that you've been traveling, right? 
you're leaving it, but will you be back? Maybe, maybe not. You don't know. Yeah, that's exactly, that's a really good analogy, metaphor, yes. (laughs) And (laughs) it's out there. I think that helps that it's not like when you end the show, you tear your episodes off the internet. I suppose somebody could do that if they wanted to, but I'm not doing that. So I feel like it's still there. And, you know, I may shift things on my Instagram account a little bit, but I'm ready to take on less of a Jet Set Lizette persona and more of just who I am. Lizette Austin, who's a podcaster, probably still a travel podcaster. And that feels good. That actually feels like the next move, you know? Yeah. It's almost like instead of changing your identity or letting go of an identity, it's like you're just expanding upon that identity that you started to create. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that it's more that original passion of podcasting. Travel became the vehicle for that. But really, the passion is podcasting and storytelling and inspiration, you know, sharing, inspiring things with people, getting people excited about stuff, having them want to get creative too. So yeah, it feels like it started with this online course and all these things. That was the doorway. But it doesn't have to stay there because that's not really the point. It can go beyond travel podcasting. Yeah. Is there anything else that you would like to share with listeners of Podcast Envy? I mean, there's so many challenges. There's so many challenges. Such a weird time and uncertain and kind of scary. But and there's this like this interesting doorway to creativity. I've seen so many people pivot with their podcasts. I could tie the podcasts in with (laughs) their platforms. So I just say, don't give up, get creative. I'm staying sane. And if I can, total shiny object syndrome, then you can too. And uh, yeah, don't be afraid to try new things, new podcasts. <laughs> podcast Envy is produced by your podcast boss, Andrea Klunder. That's me. The Podcast Envy theme music is by Valentin Sosnitsky, courtesy of the Free Sound Project at freesound.org. And our podcast angel music is by Benjamin Masterpolito, also on freesound.org as Lemon Cream. All music is licensed under the Creative Commons. Our episodes are mixed by Edwin Ruiz. And hey, if you want your show to sound as good as ours, hire us. Put the magic audio mojo of the Creative Imposter Studios to work for you. Thanks so much for listening, and here's to making your podcast the envy of everyone else.